Hey, what's up? It's Chris here from Chris's Sci-Fi Reactions. Today we're back with another Stargate SG-1. This is called Fire and Water. Um, the last episode wasn't the best episode storyline-wise, but we did see a lot of really good character development from Tilk, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. I don't think there's much in the way of housekeeping. Uh, the full uncut, unedited reaction is available on Patreon, along with early access, because Stargate SG-1 is one of those early access programs. Uh, yeah, I think let's just get straight on into this. I'll pass this on to SG-4. They'll be geared up and ready for departure by 1100 hours. Thank you, Sergeant. We haven't really heard much in the way of uh, our other Stargate team since the First Commandment. Is there anyone due back? No, sir. Incoming traveler. Repeat. Incoming traveler. SG-1, sir. Open the irons. Get a medical team down there. Medical team, report to Stargate room. Medical team, report to Stargate room. Okay, where's Daniel? I doubt that they would have left him behind. Colonel O'Neill, SG-1 couldn't have been deployed more than three hours ago. What happened? Colonel, look at me. Look at me. They're in shock. Get them to the infirmary. Colonel? Where's Dr. Jackson? Daniel Jackson. He didn't make it, sir. Daniel's dead, sir. of these uniforms, see if there's any form of contamination. Yes. What? What is that? It's a pen light. I'm sorry, you must be photosensitive. You think? It's all right, Colonel. We can do this after debriefing or even tomorrow. It's interesting, it was sort of like um, a Stargate version of an episode of Voyager where they were saying farewell to, I think it was the first Martian, you know, the first person to go on a mission around Mars. Seems a bit... God, seeing Tilk in civilian outfit like that, it's quite good. So we're sitting around eating some kind of gourmet Abedonian. Okay. It's Acadian, not Sumerian, so... It's a tough one. Let me think. <clears throat> Reveal. And I think this is the first time we've actually seen a proper... Alien. Arca. Not fate on Morocco. Reveal fate on Because the Nox, while they were alien, Morocco, what is that? they were humanoids. That's you? 
this one is Not very so much an reveal fate what a alien I think Sorry, he's a I, I don't know what you want me to do jeez I don't know what you want me to do that call in the hand once played he said it made him feel as though he were touching history that's nice here you know some really nice things. Jeez. I, I just... Knowledge. You have knowledge. Of Babylon, yes, but only a, a small amount of knowledge has survived all that time. The knowledge is there in your mind. Okay, you are asking me to remember something that happened thousands and thousands of years before I was born. To tell you something that I, I couldn't possibly know. You deceive. Why? God, why, why, why would I do that? You serve the goal. No, no. Now, I lost my wife, my, my mate, because of the ghoul. They took her from me, and I despised them for that. Then yeah, you, you despise them. You, you hey, killed I their young know. as well. I don't know. Well, your brain chemistry has been seriously compromised. All of you have abnormally low levels of serotonin. Do you know how much has been lost? Great libraries burned to the ground, cities destroyed by wars. Most of our history is buried in time. You are... Sure. Of what? Of who? I mean... Bring to me. All three of you have conflicting feelings about Daniel. I know he's dead. I know he's alive. The options, I am willing to take the risk. I am not. Well, he clearly Look, doesn't want to hurt Daniel, but... I don't have 4,000 years. Maybe you can afford to search all that time, but I can't. There will be much pain. You may die. Well, I would rather die than stay here in the knowledge that I will never see my wife or my friends again. Three, fair point. The uh, fire Daniel was caught in lashed out toward us. When we went to help him, it was hot. Very hot. There was water, a body of body of water nearby. So, someone's been messing with our heads. There is one way to find. I'm it. not sure if hypnosis is still used as a um, Colonel, I've had psychological with hypnosis in an undergrad psych course. Let me take a shot. Um, you know, it's not used in psychology anymore. I don't think I could be wrong. I'm not a psychologist. Completely relaxed. I want you to go back to the day you last saw Daniel. He's with Oh, okay, so this isn't a planet, it's a moon orbiting a gas giant. Looks Neptune-y, maybe? Not quite Neptune. If you move Neptune closer to our sun, like it would turn uh, purple like that, so ocean. maybe it is a Neptunian planet. Just closer to its sun. Because I think all the planets we've been to, well, all the places we've been to so far are planets. This is the first one that's an actual moon. What's that thing out there? Get some sleep. Ah, uh, home. Yeah, about that apartment. Oh, you didn't? The uh, day after the memorial service. Memorial service? Colonel said some really nice things. He, he, he did. did. He did?
Okay, so that was Stargate SG-1, Season 1, Episode 12, Fire and Water. Not the best episode. Um, yeah, it wasn't exactly the best episode. I'd probably give it maybe a high 6, low 7. Um, it's funny, we had like two really strong episodes and now we've had two, you know, just average episodes. That being said, you know, Bloodlines and Fire and Water weren't bad episodes, aren't bad episodes, they're just average. But let's just break it down. We start off with um, Stargate SG-1, uh, SG-1 returning through the gate. They then seem to be in shock and don't really know what's happening. Then General Hammond asks, you know, what? where's Daniel? And they say he's dead. Um, yeah, one thing I really don't like is when we have sort of the main character perceived as sort of dead. We, we already know that he's not dead. You know, I think if they maybe would have built up a character like Dr. Frazier or, um, the one that controls the game, if they built up his character and sort of did that with his character, or even maybe the general, say he was going on a first mission and then that sort of thing happened, that might have worked better. But even with the general, he's, you know, he's like in the main credits, I think. Then we, you know, get uh, into the infirmary with Dr. Fraser examining them. They're all in shock. Uh, Tilk, they try and take Tilk's blood pressure, but he gets all angry about it. He doesn't want it done. Then they end up, you know, being told they can do this tomorrow, basically. Then they have the interviews about, you know, what happened. Then Dr. Fraser is sort of talking to Hammond about the psychological effects. Hammond, yeah, is very much like just getting them back into duty, saying that's basically the best thing, that we don't have to worry about PTSD once we get them in the field. They'll be fine. Then we have the funeral, um, which really reminded me of... Um, a funeral that we sort of had in the Star Trek Voyager franchise of a character that was like the first person around Mars or whatever. I, it's been a long time since I've seen the Voyager series. The funeral was actually done really well, especially, you know, Jack said some really nice things, you know, and the way they sent sort of a reef through the Stargate. And it was, yeah, a really good farewell. Then we find Daniel wakes up on this planet, which seems to be this mysterious lab. Then we have the wake and we see Tilt in casual clothing, which I really like. I hope we get to see more of Tilk sort of in the casual um, range. You know, obviously in a series like this, going out of the base, you know, on Earth, that's not really what the series is about. It's more about going off world. But it is good to see Tilk sort of in civilian clothes. <clears throat> Then we meet this alien who's asking Daniel to translate. Jack's sort of having a hard time. He smashes the general's window. <laughs> then uh, Daniel's trying to translate all of this. The alien's getting a bit angry that he won't. 
then they're cleaning out uh, Daniel's place. We sort of um, hear Sam reading the diary and hear a reference to the movie. My my knowledge of the movie is yeah, I've I've seen it, but and it's I've seen it enough to sort of maybe recognise the odd reference, but not all of it. <clears throat> Then we see Daniel, uh, you know, an image of Daniel burning alive in fire again. And, yeah, it sort of reminds me a bit of the uh, scene in Supernatural. If any of you have ever seen Supernatural, there's a, se uh, a series, not a series, there's an episode where we see sort of this thing. Um... Yeah, then we have this amphibious creature. I shouldn't really call him a creature, but an amphibious alien. Sort of really interested in this Omaruka, I think is how he pronounced it. Omaruka? Omaruka. One of them. Then we sort of have this doubt that Daniel's dead. And yeah. General Hammond says, you know, one of our people might still be out there. He says to da the alien says to Daniel, you know, there's no escape. Daniel was quite concerned that he's asking the impossible and that he'll never get to see his friends again. Then talks about, you know, memories being up there. Here we have Tilk and this, you know, relaxing sound sort of goes into this meditation. Here we have Daniel sort of talking about, oh, extracting memory by force, and that it could cause damage. Here we have, um, when it, Jack says we need to go back, we sort of get a programmed response from Tilt and... Uh, Sam. Here we do the hypnosis thing, and we find that we're on a moon orbiting a gas giant. Um, you can sort of identify the colors, like the white is ammonia ice, I think, in a gas giant. And the purple, you know, is sort of what you see in Neptune, that lovely colour. But if you were to move Neptune closer to the sun, the colour of Neptune would change to more of a purple as the temperatures warm the planet up. <clears throat> we also have the volcanic gases, which is sort of reminiscent of Io that orbits Jupiter. Usually due to the gravitational forces of Jupiter causes the volcanic activity. So, that being said, on this moon, I'm really overthinking this, but on this moon, the tides would probably be quite high, not so peaceful. <laughs> this, um, the alien then attacks the team members and takes them down and basically brainwashes them. Here we have uh, the aliens sort of taking the memories by force. Here we have them back on the moon, trying to find Daniel. We find this alien creature, then we're talking about being friends, but in time, you know, not right now. And then... They're talking about going back to Earth and sort of the funeral, and Jack said some really nice things, which Daniel seemed surprised about. Okay, so that was Stargate SG-1, Season 1, Episode 12, Fire and Water Breakdown. Um, it was an okay, average episode, either a high 6. Yeah, I'm going to stick with a 6. Um... Yeah, if you want the full uncut and edited reaction, that is available on Patreon, along with early access on Patreon. Um, if 
you're watching this on Patreon next week, there will only be one episode of Stargate SG-1, but the following week, there will be two again. If you're watching this on YouTube, that won't be a problem. It will just be the normal one a week. You won't miss out on one. Okay. Um, link to Patreon is listed in the description below, as well as my social media accounts, Facebook and Twitter. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to give it a like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.